Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how to troubleshoot and fix slow internet. Everyone obviously needs access to internet. It doesn't matter what device you're using, whether it be a Windows or Mac, smartphone or tablet, you need access to the internet in order to get access to your emails, stream video, and of course to play on social media. And not only that, if you're a business owner, you need access to internet too. But like AI, internet's one of those great mysteries of the universe where a lot of people don't realize what they need to do in order to ensure that they have a good connection. Before we get too involved in this video, if you want to stay tuned to more videos like this, be sure to like, share, and comment on this video so that you can continue to receive good content and your friends will be able to receive it too. So as far as internet is concerned, it's one of those great mysteries because in many instances, you'll call your internet service provider. They'll say everything's great on their end, meaning that all your internet provider is really concerned about is how quick the speed is to the modem. But after that, as far as your devices, your printers, everything else, your internet service provider does not care. And it's up to you or your IT professional to be able to troubleshoot the rest. So what do we need to look at as far as things when it con concerns the internet in your home or business? Well, we'll take a look at several things so that you'll know what to do and how to fix those issues. So the first thing that you have to look at as far as slow internet is, did you get the right internet service? Are you using gerbil powered internet to power all of those internet things in your home. And I realize I use the word internet quite a bit, but it's all internet related, right? Well, anyway, uh, there are several internet services out there and probably the best for a home or a business would be what I would call cable-based or fiber-based service. Now, fiber-based service, either there's cable or fiber run throughout your business or throughout your residential area that will allow you to get access to high-speed internet. Now, cable or fiber internet can offer you speeds that are either, I would say, probably 100 megabits per second. No, let's go higher. 300 megabits per second up to a gigabit or two of speed. Now, that's through a wire. That is not wireless. Now, wirelessly, most internet service providers only guarantee up to 80% of that. And that can be as low as 50% of that one or two gigabit speed that you are actually paying for. So before you start crying and saying, well, I've got some crappy internet, then you need to make sure that you are complaining about your wired signal or your wireless signal. Also, as far as internet providers are concerned, now you have mobile hotspots and you have home internet services from T-Mobile and Verizon, which offer cellular internet, which with today's 5G speeds are pretty good, but they aren't going to give you the speeds that you would get with your fiber or cable based internet. So the deciding factor is this, if it's only you and maybe one other person then, and if you're in a rural area and there's no fiber in your area, then you probably could get, go with a home-based internet service. Also, if you do minimal streaming, um, not fiber, we'll say cellular internet service would be good enough for you. If you do minimal streaming, you just need to check email, surf the internet occasionally, then cellular internet is going to be good for you. But... If you're in a rural, if you're in an urban area, you stream a lot within your home and your business, then you need to make sure that you are using cable, cable, not cable, cable internet service or fiber internet service in order to make sure that you get the bandwidth that you need in order to make sure that all of your devices and everything internet working, any everything internet is going to work within your home or business. Next, 
is one simple trick that most people don't think of, and you've got to do it right, is to make sure that you reset that modem every now and then. Every now and then your internet speeds will slow down because your modem needs to be reset. Now your modem, and when I say reset, let me clarify that. You need to unplug and plug in your modem again. Sometimes your internet service provider will make changes to their service. And so in doing so, your modem and router need to be unplugged and plugged back in to get those changes on your end. Now you never want to reset a modem or a router because it will clear out all of your current settings, meaning that every device in your home knows what to connect to. And if you reset it, then it resets that modem and router back to factory defaults and you'll have to reconfigure your home network. So always remember, if you are running into slow issues, make sure that you unplug your modem and router and allow it to catch up with what your internet service provider is delivering to you. Next on that list of things that could be going wrong with your slow internet is that maybe you just have too many devices connected to your wired or wireless internet service. Now it's true that most modems will allow you to connect up to 226 devices at the same time, sometimes even more depending on your setup. But if you have kids at home streaming or you and your house or you and your spouse stream quite a bit at home, then those items can slow down your internet. Also, your network traffic can be slowed down by anything smart that you have in your home, such as Amazon devices, Google Home devices, wireless cameras or wired cameras, any smart home device that you have connected to your router can slow down your internet, even though it's not pulling a signal directly from the internet all the time. So again, that brings up the question of how much bandwidth are you getting with your internet provider? Are you using 1G and maybe you need to update to 2G or higher with your internet service? Keep that in mind and make sure that you take a inventory of how many devices you have. The more devices you have, the stronger your internet signal service should be into your home, not necessarily your Wi-Fi signal, which brings up the next reason why you could be having issues. It's a good possibility that the Wi-Fi in your home sucks. Many people get upset and think that they're having issues with their router, when in all actuality, it could be the fact that you've just got crappy signal in your home. Now, one of the best things that you should do to improve your internet signal or your Wi-Fi signal throughout your home is to make sure that you have a internet router that is able to provide a signal throughout your home and that it's properly located. Most store-bought routers can cover realistically about a 1,500 to 2,000 square foot home or office area with one single router. Routers are pretty powerful now to think about all those waves going through your body. But yeah, most routers nowadays can cover pretty good distance, but they need to be centrally located in your home, meaning in the middle of your house in order to provide a nice robust signal throughout the home. Now, even if you, or if you have an instance where you're not able to locate your router in the center of your home, or you have a pretty large home, you only have two options and the options are come kind of limited. So number one, you can get wireless range extenders, which frankly, I'm not too much a fan of because if you do a wireless range extender, all you're doing is repeating that wireless signal and it degrades or you lose some of that speed once you start installing wireless range extenders. Now, 
this gets into the whole issue of what do I get as far as range extenders. But before we talk about that, your other option would be to run wired access to those weak areas of your homes and install um, access points such as ubiquity access points, which is what I had to do in my home, which has fixed the wireless issue. Now, as far as your options as routers, my recommendation, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back and, and verify that you do have a strong Wi-Fi signal throughout your home, not internet signal, Wi-Fi signal, meaning that you are getting full bars wherever you are in your house when it comes to the Wi-Fi connection in your home. Now, last but not least, we can finally talk about equipment, and that is the whole router situation. Now, routers are constantly changing as far as the technology is concerned. So probably about every five years, you need to upgrade your router. And the router's probably like the James Brown of your household, meaning that it's the hardest person working in the household, which means it's 20, 24 hours a day, and after a while, it just gets tired. Like James always would say, I can't go no more. And your router just gets to that point. So it's a good idea to replace that router every five years. Now, here comes the big debate that everyone talks about. It's up to you, but my professional recommendation, especially since these videos are geared for tech tips for non-tech people, go ahead and rent the router and modem from your internet service provider. Trust me, it is worth paying that extra five to $10 a month to get a router from your internet provider. Why? Well, when it comes time to get a new router, since you're leasing the equipment, you can just walk into your favorite internet store and swap it out for a newer model. It also, if you are leasing the router and modem from your internet service provider, whenever you have issues with that piece of equipment, they have to troubleshoot it for you and send out a technician sometimes to go through the full process. So would you rather the headache of dealing with a third party router, thinking that, oh, I'm gonna get a better router, when you probably don't know anything about routers, just rent the equipment from your internet provider. For you tech nerds that stumbled across this video, you can get your own darn routers and mess with it what you want, but please don't make that recommendation to people who don't have any clue as to how a router will work. But, Switch that thing out. If you haven't switched your router out and you can't remember, now may be the time to swap that router out so that you can have robust internet. Now, again, internet can be a hard thing to troubleshoot. And just to make sure that you have the tools on hand to help you through that process, there are a couple of tools that you can use in order to help your internet troubleshooting process. The first tool is my favorite, which is speedtest.net. Anytime that you think that you're having problems with the internet, just go to speedtest.net, as you can see at the upper left-hand corner. You go to speedtest.net, we'll give you your location, who your internet provider is. It's just a simple matter of hitting go, and speedtest will give you your upload and your download speed as far as your internet is concerned. Now, my upload and download speed are good enough for streaming on even global television. And as you can see, my download speed is currently at 95 megabits per second. Now I am using a wireless connection. I am quite a ways from my router and I've got the internet speed that I need in order to do what it is that I do. Under most circumstances in today's world, your upload and your download speed should be pretty equal as far as your speed is concerned. Uh, also the good thing about speed test now is that it'll tell you as far as how your quality is for what you're trying to do. So speed test is saying it's great for browsing quality, great for game playing, great or good for streaming quality, and video call quality is great. So it is all up there, and I can even rate my Google Fiber as my provider 
for my internet service. Now, that is not the only tool that you can use to check out your internet. If you're having sporadic issues and you need to get to the bottom of it, because sometimes speed tests will tell you that you're doing good and then your internet signal will drop. Well, there is a great website called orb.net where you can go and download a utility that will monitor your internet on any device. Now, the good thing about your ORB score is that you're, you want a pretty decent score of green or higher. Uh, you don't want the red speed, which is lower. But to get ORB, it's pretty simple. You can just click on Get ORB, and as you can see, it's available for Mac, Windows, iOS devices, Android, Linux, and other devices out there. Now, I've already got Orb installed, so there is the Orb app. And as you can see, I can set up an account or I can just use it. But according to Orb, and you can see the information is as good as, or shows the same information as speedtest.net. But as you can see, let me get this centered a little bit. My Orb score is 93, which is pretty darn good. And also Orb, if you download the app onto your computer, shows you how long you have been connected to the internet. Again, speed tests would be used if you just want to quickly check out your speed. Orb is a monitoring service, which is free, that will allow you to monitor up times and down times when it comes to your internet. So if you think that you're having issues with your internet, then download Orb and hopefully that will help you troubleshoot and fix some of those internet issues that you are having. So the purpose or my goal with my videos is to open you up to a whole new world of ideas and experiences when it comes to the technology you use at home and at work. I love technology. I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching. Thank you.